Hello, everybody. This is Robbie from Audifier. And today I'm very excited because I'm going to show you all the new features that are included in Sequitor 1.1, the new Sequitor update. Uh, we received a lot of requests uh, from very enthusiastic users, and we try to accommodate all of them. The first difference, apart from the 1.1 written here, is already a few colors over here in the key switches. We added a few key switches, but also we added a new way to access them. For example, before we used to have from C0 to G0 controls that we use when we record phrases. Don't panic, it's not going to be any different. It's still there, but as soon as I press REC to record, now I have my key switches as I had before. So I have the pause on the C0 and all the other choices of nodes. You see they're still changing, nothing has changed there. But this is only accessible when you're recording because you don't need them while you're playing. Let's just record the phrase here. Now, as soon as I save, we go back to the playing mode and new key switches are appearing here. So different colors. We have this first red key switches. There are four of them, then some, I'd say, purple. Um, and then one white one, which is inactive. And then we have again on the B and B flat zero, we still have the speed control. So what are these new key switches here? These new key switches allow us to do something like this. So basically, if it was not that clear, what's happening is that I have four new selectable starts. So with this key switch, the C, I start from node number three, with the following from number five, seven, and so on, nine. But these are not set in stone. In fact, if I go to the new page that we created, which is called system, I can choose what note I can start, and I have four choices. Here I have a reminder that the key switch will start from C0, and the first note I can change, it could be the fifth note, then the ninth note, and then the thirteenth note, and then to make it silly, <laughs> the fifteenth note. So, now when I go to the make page again, when the optional start is off, it will start from the first note. When it's on, it will start with one of these four options. It depends which one you're choosing. So we can do stuff like that. And this was one of the earliest requests we had. The person who did request this uh, was concerned about the playability on a live situation. And with this new uh, feature, uh, Sequitor becomes a little bit more, more of a, an improvisational tool. Okay, second thing, we had a request from uh, several users which says, but hey, I use many different keys in a composition. I change from G minor to C minor, so I would like Sequitor to follow this. But before, in the original version, we couldn't because we had just one key. Now, thanks to these key switches, I can change the keys on the fly. Of course, the key scale control needs to be on, so now I'm going to play. How does this work? Okay, we need to go again to the system page, select here scale options. Now, we have a reminder that this key switch is start from F0. I can set my first key to, um, let's make them really different. So like, uh, ba -ba -ba, this one and uh, diminished and uh, minor harmonic. Okay. When I press F, I will have A minor. When I press F sharp, I will have a whole C scale. 
and then so on, all the others. Now, when I press E0 instead, what happens? He actually recalls whatever key I'm selecting. Like now I have G major, E minor. I selected it with the menu. And every time I press E0, it's going to go back to that one. So these are my four keys that I chosen in the other page. So you can see A minor, A minor, all C diminished and harmonic. A minor, all diminished and harmonic. But then when I go to E, it goes back to the key that I select, whatever key I want to select there. So basically I have five choices of, of keys. And unless you are a jazz genius, probably five keys for a song would be kind of enough. So that's the other feature we had. Another new feature that we have, and it's related still to the key scale control, is we have more user slots to save scale presets. But not only that, to explain what we've done, I'm going to just show it to you uh, in real time. So I'm going to do a crazy scale here, something with a shape that we can remember. Okay. Okay. I'm going to put them all, <laughs> all red. I'm going to press save user. These new items appear so I can select location one to location 10. So I have 10 locations to save. Then I press this little button here. Boom. I can save it like all red. Save. At this moment, when I recall user one, see, I'll go to another one, then I recall user one, this will be there, saved. Now, I need to save my, let's call it with a, a name, 4566. I need to save the snapshot. So I go back now to my initial one. There's nothing here. I can just choose whatever I want. Okay, switching on. I can choose whatever I want. Then when I go again to the 4566, user will be there. And the cool thing is that we have 10 slots, and these 10 slots are savable per snapshot. So every snapshot will have loaded 10 new user scales. Not only that, since we exported this scale, let's go to the initial state. Okay. I can load it up in another snapshot, doing like this. Import. I want to put it in location 10. All red. Here it is. Bum. We have it. So we can export, import, exchange scales from snapshot to snapshot, from song to song. If I save my snapshot like... Um, like this now. I recall the previous one, 4566, and the user one, I have that. All the other users are empty. I go in uh, 987, my user 10 is like that. Anything else? Bum, bum, bum. To note that if you haven't saved any user scales, uh, this will remain when you open another snapshots so let's load another switch on that and go to user one and it's got something there um, which will be deleted when you save something in it now it's just remembering what we've just done uh, just to make sure let's switch off sequitur we don't want to save it let's load it up again let's go to snapshot 4566 user here we have it so basically at this point we can save export import user scales okay another thing which was not requested but we thought it was a cool thing to have is a new feature for the legato so let's just um i like this one before in order to start the legato phrasing from the first note we were supposed to keep legato off at the start of the phrase and then immediately playing legato on. But now legato is already on, I play my phrase and it starts from the first note. Now I can do all my phrasing using the legato. But 
when I stop and I start again, it starts from the first one. So before we had the problem that if you left the phrase in the middle of it or in a, like an awkward kind of beat, it would always start from the following note if you didn't switch off the legato. But now we can keep it on. And it will start from the first one. Then we can switch it off when we don't want it anymore. So that's another cool thing. Another addition we made is in the option page. Before we had a fixed resonance, which we couldn't control during a performance. Now we can play and move this control or control it with a, with a slider. We just can assign it to a slider like that mid automation. I'm just using the modulation wheel at this point. So basically, if I have a phrase which had like a cutoff shape, let's do it very quickly here. Bom, 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 save. Let's go back to options. I can. I can control the resonance while I am playing. And of course you can do automation in your DAW. So that's another cool thing. Now we get to the most requested feature. And I'm very happy to say that we managed to do this. And it's the MIDI drag and drop. How does this work? Okay, let's record something with sequitur and uh, using the phrases that we have already in this patch. not the most beautiful thing in the world, but we need to go to the system page. We press the button capture. We have to play back what we recorded at least once. Now we can uh, switch off capture, wait a few seconds, and then a MIDI file icon appears. Okay, at this point we can just drag it, take it from the app, where it says MIDI there. Now we have all this MIDI information, which are what we just played in sequitur. So now we are have uh, another synth, which is, I think, uh, Logic Synth, Retro Synth, yeah. And um, we're going to play the same part. So if I put them together, Now we can uh, export and play with different sounds and double up and maybe use other library sounds. Uh, why would you want to do that? I don't know, but <laughs> I'm joking. So there you have it, MIDI drag and drop. This is the last feature that I'm going to present to you today. So thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.